If you're not familiar with what a hard money loan is, a hard money loan is essentially <clears throat> uh, like a smaller bank, I guess you could call it, but they specialize in making loans to real estate investors for a lot of these fix and flip deals and fix and rent deals. Typically, they're 12 to 15% interest, two or three points origination fees is what they uh, charge. And those, if if someone comes to me uh, desiring to be a real estate investor and they're brand new, they're wet behind the ears, they've never done any deals, they don't have a coach, they don't have mentoring, I tell them, encourage them, I don't tell them, I just encourage them to do, go get their uh, their first few deals done, you know, their first three to five to ten uh, deals done with hard money to get that experience on their belt before they graduate to private money. And that's what I did. I did ten deals and hard money, learned the ropes, paid a little bit more for that, but that was the cost of my education, right? But I was experienced, so now I could move forward, you know, with my private lenders as more credible and experienced investor for them, which gave them, you know, some added security because the more an investor is experienced, the more uh, that should equate to, uh, you know, an experienced and uh, safer risk for you um, in terms of a borrower, if that makes sense. All right. So we've talked about some of the reasons, you know, why a borrower would want to work with a private lender. So let's talk about you. Let's talk about with you defining your ideal investment. So you got to ask yourself, you know, what type of investment are you looking for? Single family homes, commercial, multifamily, others. Well, I will tell you that 80-20 rule is that 80% uh, of the time people are looking for single family uh, homes. Um, you know, as a private mortgage lender, one, they're the most plentiful, of course, but they're very easy to understand. Um, I, you know, per the SEC, I'm never going to say that anything is a hundred percent safe, you know, or guaranteed or anything like that. Cause there's, there's no investment that is a hundred percent safe or guaranteed, but single family homes seem to be, um, or have historically been one of the safest ways to, uh, to invest, right? So that's where most people gravitate towards. And I would encourage you, if you don't understand something like a complex commercial deal or a complex multifamily deal, um, whatever it may be, then I would encourage you, one, just don't invest in that. Um, you know, you really want to understand what you're investing in. That's just one of the rules of, of good investing is understand what you're investing in. And you need, need to determine... Um, are you investing for the short term or the long term? It's a very important question. And then what rate of return are you seeking? I will tell you that um, low risk, low effort, high risk, more effort. So whenever you're looking for a, um, a lower rate of return, um, then, you know, or lower risk, so to speak, then, then that's, that's, those are going to be more, there should, if you're getting a lower rate of return, there should be less risk is what I'm trying to say here. If you're looking for a higher risk, um, so a higher rate of return, I'm sorry, there's typically going to be a higher risk and more effort needed on your part. What do I mean by that? So if you're working with a brand new real estate investor and they're going to pay you 12 to 15 percent, you know, I'm not saying don't do that deal. But what I am saying is if you're working with someone brand new that's paying a very high uh, uh, rate of return, there's likely higher risk and it's likely going to require much more effort on your part, more handholding, more due diligence, more following up with them versus, you know, if someone invests with us, you know, like I said, we pay on average, you know, around 8%. But I can say, hey, we've done these, you know, a few hundred deals. These are the deals that we're investing in. They're uh, median price housing and below. These are our four exit strategies that we have with this deal. Um, so there's usually a lot less effort. We've got the team built to, um, uh, you know, uh, manage these assets and um, perform. And I will say that uh, kind of one way to encapsulate this, this section of the rate of return section is, is, a, is a quote I heard at one time and goes something like this, is that you can tell the experience of the borrower by what they pay for their money. 
you can tell the experience of the borrower by what they pay for their money. So if you have someone coming to you willing to pay 15% or whatever it is, or 12%, you've got, you know, probably an assumption is, you know, that they're not very experienced. There's probably more risk, right? And so a more experienced borrower who's been in the game 5, 10, 15 years or longer, that's done hundreds of deals, they've probably cultivated relationships um, that allows them to borrow at a lower rate of return. And it's simply because what they're providing to the marketplace is a lower risk, theoretically. Um, everything I say, by the way, in case the SEC is watching, is theoretically, okay? Um, all right, so let's talk about where are the borrowers at, how to find and qualify investors. Well, they're on they're at networking event, events, which uh, I understand that we're not participating in right now because of COVID-19, the recording of this, but they're on social media. And uh, other industry professionals, word of mouth, so... Who are under industry professionals, uh, real estate agents that are working with real estate investors may be able to uh, refer you to some credible real estate investors, um, title companies, insurance agents who work with real estate investors, just industry professionals, you know, home inspectors, people that work um, with real estate investors, and that's part of their clientele, um, just word of mouth. So how do you qualify investors? So you're going to want to ask for some sources, some references, people they've done business with in the past. Um, you know, just ask them, say, hey, can you send me some references? Other uh, private lenders that they've worked, this is, is going to be a great uh, source as well. Let me take a drink of water. I apologize. <clears throat> so first thing that you're going to want to do um, – is, you know, schedule an interview, whether it just be a phone, Zoom, um, you know, in-person interview. It can be it can just be a phone call. Like I said, it can be Zoom. We've got investors who invest with us from other markets. So, so this Zoom format obviously is pretty comes in pretty handy. Um, do some digging. Um, do some digging on this person on social media, on the Internet. Um, anytime that we hire a new employee, that's one of the first things that we do is we kind of browse and peruse their social media profiles. Um, you can actually get a really, really good feel these days of kind of person, kind of character someone has uh, through social media. And then you want to ask for some data. So, like I said, you are the underwriting department. So you can ask for whatever type of data you'd like to ask for, personal financial statement, um, you know, any financials that they have, a credit report, um, and then get some information on the number of deals and the number of years in business. I don't have a scorecard that can, you know, point, yes, you need to in, in invest with this borrower. No, you shouldn't invest with them. But all of what this does here is it helps paint a story, right? It t tells a story and paints a picture of a potential borrower, and hopefully it helps you answer the question is yes or no. Should I invest with this person or no? Should I not? And sometimes it, it you, you may not be sure. So, you know, there's two ways you can go with that. If you're not sure, just go no. Or you can ask for some additional skin in the game, some additional equity, something like that to make it a win-win where you feel good about the deal. 